What's up, guys? It's Jay, more than ever kill, and welcome back to the return of my Sunday Q and A. This is a series that has some serious deep roots on my channel. <laughs> so, a few years ago, I started answering your guys' question on a Sunday while playing through games live, and believe it or not, the Sunday Q and A Let's Play ran for about 100 episodes until we got to the point to where. There was literally no more questions for me to answer, and I was just answering the same shit week in and week out. So, so we put it on the back burner for a little bit, and then Destiny came out. I gained a bunch of new subs, and I was like, you know what? Let's go ahead and bring it back with Destiny to sort of fill in some of the gaps between the Dark Below and House of Wolves. And that, that's what the Sunday Q&A is. It's a chill day where we get to hang out. We don't really do much, but we get to know each other a little bit better while killing some time in between DLCs. But when there's new content and, you know, tons of new information to get out there for you guys, the Sunday Q&A will get put back on the back burner. That's just kind of how it works. The secondary series on my channel. Some people would call it filler content. Maybe for most channels, but... For me, I really do enjoy getting to know you guys and letting you know a little bit more about me and what goes on inside of my life. I mean, if, if I really wanted to do filler content, I, I could just put up a 90 second video of me falling into a lame part of the Tower Reef with 19 seconds of commentary. Woo! <laughs> so yeah! <laughs> How about we just move along into some questions this week? And the first question comes from Ryan Cunningham, who he's asking a question that a lot of people have asked this week, but not exactly in his wording, but most people want to know if I'll be playing something other than Destiny anytime soon. But more specifically, he wants to know what my hype level is for Battleborn, Final Fantasy, and Fallout. So, uh, yeah, I mean, I I I'm always... Uh, looking forward to new games but the problem that i've had recently is that most games that come out just aren't very good i mean the best game that i've played since destiny is probably shadow of mordor and that shit got real boring real fast like i didn't even finish the goddamn game and it suffered from you know that whole assassin's creed syndrome where go to this town climb this jump off kill this guy Go to a new town, rinse, repeat. <laughs> and I don't know if I'm just old or jaded or if the games that are coming out just really do suck that much ass. I'm, I'm not sure. I'm, I'm, I'm feeling like it might be a combination of both, you know, just me being an old cranky bastard and, you know, a lot of games just not being very inspired. But there are a ton of games coming out this year. Like, you got Halo 5, you got Black Ops 3, the Take a King DLC, Fallout 4, and Star Wars Battlefront. It's a, it's a whole renaissance this year. <laughs> and, yeah, I, I don't think a game like Battleborn can stick out amongst the crowd. If, if Battleborn comes out any time before January, it's going to flop. It's going to flop badly, and it could possibly lead towards the shutting down of Gearbox. So, I'm not very hyped about a $60 MOBA being developed by the same company that gave us Alien Colonial Marines and Duke Nukem Forever. If I really wanted to play a MOBA, I'd just turn on my PC and play League of Legends or Dota or Smite for free! And those games can all run on any computer made in, like, the last, like, four years. So, they're not very intensive games to run. So, I, I really feel like Gearbox is, once again, they're just missing that boat. <laughs> as, for, as for the rest of the games coming out this year, I, I mean, Halo without Bungie is kind of meh. Uh, Fallout never really appealed to me. I, I tried Fallout 3. And it was just like every other Bethesda game that I played. It was slow, clunky, it had piss poor controls, and it was just boring as fuck. <laughs> as, for, as for games that I'm, I'm looking forward to, I mean, Star Wars Battlefront looks fucking amazing. 
Especially that old 60 frames per second. It's like, like, EA is the company that gets it about frame rate. They're like, you know what? We would rather give you, you know, a smooth running game than a game that looks like, oh, mind blowingly crisis moves at 30 frames per second on console. What? <laughs> Why would you do that? But, uh, the, the problem with EA is, is EA is a shitty company and they have shitty servers. So I'm, like, oh man, I really want to get hyped for Battlefront, but it's just like, it's, it's kind of like a hot chick with herpes. You're like, ah, I want to do it so bad, but you got the disease. <laughs> you, know what? you know what I mean? Like, like if Jennifer Lawrence was just sitting there, she's like, oh, hey, what's going on, baby? You're like. Damn, your, your voice got really deep, Jennifer. <laughs> well, she was sitting there like, ooh, you want to come eat this pussy? You're like, yeah. And she pulls up the skirt, and bam, hurt me sitting. You're like, ah, it's Jennifer Lawrence. <laughs> so just, yeah, yeah, get what I mean. But uh, uh, Black Ops 3, the campaign looks like it's going to be a lot of fun. It has skill trees, action skills, playable characters. Kind of sounds like Borderlands. Uh I'm, I'm, I'm most likely going to be giving Black Ops 3 campaign a, a close look. Uh, I, don't, I don't know about the multiplayer too much. I, it did kind of look like Titanfall. If you guys watch my Titanfall videos, you, you know that I'm actually pretty good at that style of vertical gameplay. Well, my bullets actually fucking hit! It's kind of like like Destiny. Like, I, I could kick ass in Destiny if, if the fucking connection would allow it to. <laughs> the, you know, Call of Duty, you know, historically has had some problems with... Uh, Lag, lag compensation over the last few years, so I'm really, really reserving my judgment on that. But the uh, the campaign looks like something that I'm gonna be playing a little bit, maybe at least do one playthrough. I'll probably bring a uh, Wicked Shrapnel back on my channel. We did a you know a couple Borderlands playthroughs together, and a lot of you guys really liked that. We we had a lot of fun, so I think uh probably do something like that. Maybe grab two other uh you know YouTubers, be like, yo, you guys want to play some fucking Black Ops Three campaign? And like. Not with you, Mac. Not with you. <laughs> people, people are real leery about putting my voice on their channel. Like, I don't know what my son's gonna think about the Mac. It's like, I'm sorry, <laughs> but uh, overall, I guess the biggest game that I'm looking forward to is uh, the new South Park RPG, The Fractured But Whole. <laughs> if uh, you go back on my channel. You'll see that I did about two months worth of uh, South Park Stick of Truth guides and did Easter eggs and achievements. And honestly, those are some of the easiest, funniest vids I've, I've ever made in my life. Like, seriously, making a South Park video was like the absolute most joy I've ever had on fucking YouTube ever. It's just like, I would sit down and be like, Alright guys, I'm gonna teach you how to poop, grab the poop, put it in your pocket, and then use the poop to throw at somebody. Yeah. <laughs> I commentate that shit all day long, this shit's right up my alley. <laughs> or I guess you could say it's, uh, it's right in my bowl. Ooh, yeah. <laughs> so, let's go ahead and move on to the second question of the week, which comes from Sexy Boss Motherfucker. Nice name. <laughs> he asks a question that I get a lot. But, like I said before about the, you know, Q&A when I did it with Borderlands and came back with Destiny, I'm constantly gaining new subscribers, so it, it, it's worth revisiting this in the return episode. It's kind of just like sweeping under carpet, get the shit out of the fucking way. <laughs> so, he wants to know, why don't you do YouTube or Twitch full-time, Mac? Why don't you play video games for a living? <laughs> this is like the weirdest question in the world, but it's probably the easiest for me to answer. Why, why, why doesn't anybody do something they love to do full-time? Motherfucker! Because sometimes it's not financially viable to do so. And I, I mean, I would love to do nothing other than play the video games for a living. But I got bills to pay. I got people to take care of. And historically, if you take a look at a lot of the YouTubers or streamers out there that, you know, really make a living off this and live comfortably, they all have a few things in common which allow them to pursue this gig uh, full time. One of them is time! <laughs> Motherfucker, I ain't got enough time in a goddamn day. But also, it's age. If you take a look at somebody like PewDiePie, 
My name Pinpa. <laughs> never do that again for you guys. <laughs> What's up, guys? It's Jay. Morning after kill. <laughs> I should do that with like a fucking guitar. So I'm like, What's up, guys? It's Jay. Morning after kill. Yeah. <laughs> I should have been born in the fucking sixties. I could have been an eighties rock star. I'm like, all you gotta do is just fucking have a big. Bold, she just be like, yeah, and shake it in a fucking girl's face, be like, yeah, like that dick, don't you, bitch. What, what were we talking about? <laughs> oh yeah, Pewdie, Pewdie Pie. <laughs> I told you guys I wasn't gonna do it again. It's so much fun. And now I see why he does it. My name is Pewdie Pie. <laughs> that shit's actually pretty fun to do. But when 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 he did his whole, you know, make the switch to full time, I think. He was really young, somewhere around. Like, he's still young. Like, a lot of people don't realize PewDiePie is like 24. Motherfucker, I got like 10 years on PewDiePie, all right? I'm an I'm a old ass man. So, when, when he made the switch to full time to YouTube, he was something like 18 or 19, 20 some years older. When, when you're at that age, you have a little bit more leeway if you fuck up in life. I mean, you, you always have, like, you know, I can move back home as an option, or you're young, you can sleep on somebody's couch and not feel like somebody shot you in the back the next morning, or, you know, you got friends' basements. There's always places you can go when you're young and you don't have a place to stay. But ultimately, when you're younger, you know, you, you, you can take a little bit more of a risk like that because there's nobody else dependent on you but you. But w when you're older, it's a little bit different, you know. I've, I've lived my life without financial stability, you know. I've I've done the whole 60 hours a week, paycheck to paycheck, no days off, come home, shower, smoke a bowl, and pass out till it's time to do it all over again the next fucking day. Fuck that. <laughs> right now, you know, I I'm a bit more financially stable in my life, and uh, I, I have some money in the bank for emergency, and you know, I, I got a decent amount of steady money coming into my household as of right now, and you know, it, it's it's hard to risk that at my age of 32, knowing that not only if I lose it all, it could shake faith in my relationship with my girlfriend, but also it could affect my son in a negatively impacted way. And I, I, I mean, financial ruin affects more than just me at this point. And YouTube doesn't really pay what you think it does. Like, like well, let's put down a hypothetical scenario. Say a YouTuber makes a hundred bucks a day. That is, that is a decent amount of money to make on YouTube. That requires a large amount of views to get paid a hundred dollars a day. Then you gotta factor in the people with ad block, then people on mobile that don't see ads, the people that skip the ads, and when, when you realize that that 100 bucks a day not only has to come from a large pool of views, now with all those other factors, it has to come from triple the amount of views that it normally should. So maybe in YouTube 2010, with my amount of subscribers, I'm bound to scream YouTube money! <laughs> but, uh, not no mo. But let, let, let's take a look at 100 bucks a day. Let, let, let's think about what 100 bucks a day really is. That's, that's $3,000 a month. That is $36,000 a year. Now, that's not a bad take for an 18 or 19 year old kid working at a hot dog stand, working at McDonald's or Wendy's or, you know, at a grocery store and they want to be, you know what, yeah, it, it's financially viable for you to leave, you know, a low paying job for $36,000 a year. But, uh, that shit ain't definitely, that shit ain't gonna pay my bills, man. <laughs> Average rent is like 1200 to 1500 bucks a month. For a one bedroom apartment! I live in a four bedroom house, motherfucker. <laughs> so, well, when you think about $1,200 to $1,500 a month for an apartment, that's already half of your money gone from $3,000. That's without eating, that's without paying cable, internet, power, heat, electric, water, gas. You, you, you see what I'm saying? Being an adult fucking sucks ass! <laughs> it really does. So, even. In the best case scenario, $100 a day 
from like fucking like three hundred thousand sub views. It just it doesn't pay enough. And I mean, when, when you look at Twitch, Twitch is a different beast altogether. But the top streamers on Twitch usually stream like ten to fifteen hours a day. Honestly, that's that's more game time in one day than I play in two weeks. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, as, as right now, uh, Twitch is on the back burner. Uh, YouTube will always be my one a day for you guys. I always have a video for you guys. I love doing YouTube. It's, it's just not financially viable for me to do it as a living. Maybe one day. Maybe one day it will. But as of right now, uh, I'm just enjoying this with you guys. I really do. I, I love you guys. and I love the support. And I... I like having a little bit of extra money a month to be able to go and buy a pair of shoes that I like, because Mac likes shoes. <laughs> so, let's go ahead and move on to the next question from Lester Dakin, who asks a question I probably shouldn't answer. But, uh, he wants to know what my opinions are on the Confederate flag controversy. Bye! <laughs> I love this question! Because it deals with history. And those of you guys that have been watching my channel for a while, you know that I'm, I'm a big history buff. I love, you know, reading about history, watching the history channel, and finding all about, you know, where we come from. Because when you know where you come from, then you have a better idea of where you're headed. But, uh, you know, this question skirts the line into politics, which is a big no no for Max Channel. Three things no religion, no politics. No Avenged Sevenfold, no questions asked. <laughs> we kind of skirt away from all that. But I, I, I want to look at this objectively because I have a really good opinion on this that I want to get out there, but without it being politically charged. So, first off, it, it, is the Confederate flag by itself just sitting there, is it offensive? I don't think the Confederate flag in and of itself is offensive. I, I, I think the context for what most people display the rebel flag, I, I think that is the offensive part. The, the confederate flag is basically devolved into a symbol used by uneducated racist motherfuckers clinging onto a past that they don't even fully understand them own damn selves. Now, at the heart of American history, the rebel flag was meant to emulate the British Union Jack flag to kind of piss off the North when they separated away from the uh, Union. The problem that I have is that I don't think that it should be flown on state or government owned buildings. It's not our flag and it doesn't have any official status as of now. But I don't think that it should be erased from history altogether because when you try to erase history then no one learns from it. There is actually a famous quote, I'm pretty sure it was uh, by Eisenhower when they uh, got to Germany and they saw the concentration camps and they said take pictures of everything because one day people are going to say that this didn't actually happen because it's too atrocious. You can't believe that something like this can actually happen. But when you try to erase that history, like I said, it has a chance of repeating itself. No one learns from it. So, do you know what I see when I see somebody flying a Confederate flag? I see it as a reminder of how far we've come in America that even if you're wrong, even if you're wrong, you still have the right and the freedom in our country to be wrong even if it makes you look like a douchebag. Make no mistake about it though, slavery is a mistake that cannot happen ever again. But it's also disrespectful to try to wipe slavery from our history. It's disrespectful to those that went through the struggle to try to forget their struggle and pretend that it doesn't exist and that flag is part of that struggle. And we can't forget that. Besides, I mean, if you really think about it, the flag that we salute in our country every day is the same flag that flew over a nation 
every day for 100 years before the Civil War and the abolishment of slavery in America. Think about that. that that's, that's food for thoughts. Everybody out there that's like, oh my god, we can't have that because it represents slavery and, you know, racism and the fucking American flag that we have right now is the same flag that was flying over. The North had slaves too for 100 years. We're forgetting about that. We can't forget about that. We can't forget about that struggle. Like I said, that flag is part of that struggle. I don't think we should fly it, but uh, if you want to be the guy that wants to display it, like I said, it's a reminder of how far we've come in America. That even if you're wrong, you still have the right and freedom in our country to be wrong, even if it makes you look like a douchebag. Even if it makes you look like a douchebag. <laughs> so let's go ahead and move on to the last question from Devin Murphy, who wants to know if I would ever try to go meet my father because he wants to go meet his. So I'm, I'm sorry, Devin. My answer to that is going to be no. <laughs> Not really. I, I mean, by the time I actually got to the age that having a dad really mattered, I was, I was already adjusted to life without a dad. I mean, it, it, it's funny because other people in my life, when I was a kid, they always put more emphasis on it than I used to. Like, I remember in first grade, they used to pull us out of class once a week and we, we would be in the guidance counselor office. There'd be a little table and there'd be like eight of us from all other classes. And we all didn't have dads and we would be sat in a room to talk about our feelings. And it was fucking stupid. <laughs> it was the most, biggest waste of time ever. And I was a, I was just like, man, are, are you trying to remind me of the fact once a week that I don't have a dad? It's like, you just walk into school, you don't have a dad! It's like, oh my god! <laughs> so, fuck, man. It'd be like, if I if my foot got chopped off, and I was just like, chilling. And for a moment there, I forgot that my foot was chopped off, and I was just chilling, having fun. Somebody just walked, yo, you ain't got no foot! Ah, Jesus fucking guys, I just forgot about us not having a foot. <laughs> I mean, as I got older, I realized that my mom is fucking batshit crazy. And uh, most likely chased my dad away with her craziness. So I kind of made peace with the fact that my dad left, not only through my own experiences with my own batshit crazy mom, but also with my own batshit crazy ass baby mama drama <laughs> so through the experiences of having you know a crazy baby mama and a crazy mother to see you know what it's like to have a crazy baby mama yeah i fuck that <laughs> I, I i get why you left bruh but uh even if i knew where he lived i, I wouldn't go see him and fuck him I ain't got time for that. <laughs> so, my name is Jay. What did I have to kill? I want to thank you guys for watching. Make sure you guys rate, comment, subscribe. If you could leave a thumbs up on the video, I'd really appreciate it because it gives me motivation to make more videos for you motherfuckers that watch my motherfucking videos. It's 24 minutes of commentary gold. <laughs> Feels good to be back the Sunday Q&A. Make sure you guys leave your questions in the comment section down below and uh, try to get some more questions in next week. So, my name's Jay, what did I have to kill? Thanks for watching, and I'm gonna see you guys later.